What is going on, Box Bros? It's the Box Man here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Kotar. We're in space, baby. We're we're in hyperspace, uh, currently going toward uh, uh, Yavin. Good old Yavin, you know, very, very historical place, uh, Yavin. You know, that's, that's where one of the biggest events in galactic history happened, you know? Well, then again, I guess it hasn't happened yet. But in 4,000 years, in 4,000 years it's gonna happen, and it's pretty big, all right? So we're going there to some station to see what it's all about, because I'm curious as hell about it. But, uh, in the meantime, I guess while we're flying through space, uh, maybe we'll talk to some people, like Big Z! <laughs> Man, Big Z, it seems like you never want to talk to me, bro. Like, well, what the hell? What's up with that? What the? Are you? All right. Well, how about you make me another grenade? You know what, Big Z? You know, yeah, we'll just talk later, buddy. I, th I think I think it's best we just talk later. Big Z's a freaking jerk. Oh yeah, we got Jahani. Okay, uh, I guess we'll talk to her. Well, what's up, Jahani? How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? Um, she called me. Aren't you a Padawan too? Wait, is Jahani a knight? No, she's not. There's no way. Pretty sure she's a Padawan too. So I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Um. Are you are you doing all right? Uh, how how are things in the ship? You know, you comfortable? This doesn't look like too comfortable of a spot you're in right here. Uh, I I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. Oh, shaken. Hmm. Okay. Well, what's wrong? I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. Oh dear. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. I look inside myself now, and I can still see it. I still feel it. You know, I don't really think I care very much. <laughs> That's just terrible. Maybe you just need more time. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. Maybe. I don't know how being in my company would help, but maybe it's because I, I saved her. Yeah, I, I did. That's true. Well, if I see you begin to slip back, I will intervene. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. Okay. Well, yeah, Jahani, I mean, she was literally an enemy at one point, but she turned around. Hopefully, uh, she can deal with her inner, inner issues. Hopefully, it won't come back to bite us in the end, you know? Uh, wait, isn't... Yeah, Candorus is over here, too. Uh, what's up with you, Candorus? He's just hanging out by the old swoop bike. Dude, we got our own swoop bike, too. That's amazing. Like, that, not that great? That is great! Isn't that great? You better believe I'm gonna take this thing out on the track if, if we ever come across a track. But how you doing, Candorus? Yeah, what do you want? What the... What, are you always gonna greet me like that, man? I'm just, I'm just coming to talk to you, you know? I was wondering if you had any more war stories. That last one was pretty damn good. I was one of the best youth warriors in the Clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Mm. Except Mandalore himself, of course. Of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. Sounds crazy. How barbaric! <laughs> and what was your story? I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. Oh my god. Huh. I didn't think Mandalorians got afraid. Every new warrior has to fear to understand how to beat it. 
You must know that. True. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. Oh my god, dude, this sounds insane. Wonder if he's exaggerating any of this. Well, who are you fighting anyway? I don't remember. It doesn't matter anyway. That world's dead now. Jeez. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons was unmatched. An 80 kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. Good lord. I must have been some damn fight, Candorous. I wish I could have seen it. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there <laughs> something else you want to know? I guess that's it then, Candorous. Thanks. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Damn straight. Candorous told you about what it's like to drop through the atmosphere in one of the Mandalorian's basilisk war droids. From what he said, they must have been fearsome weapons. He would probably tell you more stories if you talk to him later. I will be sure to do that because goddamn, his stories are pretty crazy. I guess let's see what Mission's up to. You alright, Mission? Hey there, what can I do for you? Uh, let's see. You feel like playing some Pazok Mission? You know, I, I could uh, use a little, a little brushing up after the last game I suffered. Wanna practice your skills, eh? Sure, I'll play a few hands. Just for practice, though. I don't wanna bet with you. Huh. <laughs> What the hell? Well, I guess, like, we kind of share all the same credits, probably, so it'd be a little bit pointless. Let me take away one of the minus fours and, of course, put in the, uh, plus four minus four. All right, let's go. Let's see how good mission is at Pazak. Oh, oh my god, 16. Okay, um, no, I don't want to use the plus four minus four yet. No. Okay, look at that. Oof. All right, mission, you know, you got that one, mission. I'll give it to you. We got nine, five, uh, 19. I'm standing on 19. How can you not stand on 19, you know? Oh, look at that, man. All right, but hey, we got the hand advantage now. So this is it, we're going all out. We got a one first draw, that's really good. Really good, nine, okay. No, oh no, 18. Oh dear, all right, I guess we're standing on 19 again. There's no way she's gonna get 20 again, come on. Mission? Mission, you, you're, you're cheating just like freaking Galru, dude! How dare you accuse me of cheating? How many freaking Galrudes are in this gal? What does it matter? We didn't bet nothing. Oh, God damn it, Mission, what the hell? Now, what about your brother? What do you think's going on? I've been thinking about Lena and what she said about Griff. You know, how he was always blaming other people for his problems. There might be something to what she said. Oh. Oh, so, f okay, hold up. In the last episode, you were like, you can't, you can't trust that, what, what she, what, what she call her, uh, Twi'lek dancing whore or whatever. Like, you can't trust her. And then all of a sudden, you know what, what she said is starting to make sense. I told you she got red-pilled. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. You mean you believe her story now? No, of course not. Not really. But what if... What if it was his idea to leave me behind? I'm not saying Griff would just abandon me, but maybe, maybe he did want to leave me behind. Just temporarily, you know? He might have done that if he planned on coming back later, but things don't usually work out for Griff the way he planned, you know? And that's when he'd get in trouble. He was always borrowing money he could never pay back. He might have been trying to skip out on his debts when he left Harris. He would have to leave his little sister behind so it would look like he was coming back. Mm. 
I don't think that justifies leaving your little sister alone. Underaged little sister alone on a on basically a third world planet. Well, third world in the area where he left her, in the, in the undercity or the lower city, whatever. It was it was bad. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think anything justifies that. So basically, he sacrificed you to save his own hide? Yeah. Well, no. Not exactly. Look, all I'm trying to say is that the more I think back, the more I realize I might be idolizing my brother a bit, not seeing all his faults. I still want to find him. I need to see him again. It's just that I'm not sure how I'll react when I do. Hmm. Who knows? I mean, who knows if we'll even find him on Tatooine? He could, he could be dead for all we know. But we'll try. Well, when the time comes, you'll know what to say, Mission. Maybe. We'll see. I don't... I don't want to judge him yet. Maybe Lena was lying. Or maybe... Maybe she... wasn't. All I know is, I'd like to speak to Griff myself. If we have time, I'd like to go talk to the Zerker Corp rep on Tatooine and see what he has to say about where my brother is now. Hey, don't worry, Mission. We'll be heading there soon enough. As soon as we check out this Yavin station. Speaking of which, I think we might be arriving soon. In the meantime, maybe we'll talk to Basil and Karth. Hey, what's going on, Basil? How can I help? So, uh, yeah, you know what? It does look like something's been bothering uh, Basil lately. She's got, she's got that look on her face. You know what I'm saying? No, not bothering me. Not exactly. I've been thinking about what the Jedi Council said about the two of us. There is a bond between us. I do not dispute that. I can feel it, as I'm sure you can. The nature of that bond and its effect on our mission remain in question. I think you're interested in more than just the bond between us. Oh my god. <laughs> you know what? I'm saying it. Please. <laughs> I'm a Jedi. Such feelings, such attractions are well, they're beneath me, quite frankly. I admit, I find you intriguing. I, <gasps> I mean, I find your command of the Force intriguing, but <gasps> my interest in you is purely academic. Surely you can understand why. Our fates are strongly connected. So connected that a literal bond has been forged between us. I saw your service records when you were transferred aboard the Ender Spire, but nothing beyond that. I know very little about you. I'd like to ask you some questions, given our relationship. Whoa, questions? Huh. Okay, I'll answer a few questions. Don't worry, these are simple questions. Nothing too intrusive. First, what kind of background do you have? Background? Uh, hmm. Well, I was a scout. Uh, the fleet recruited me for my skills. Good. On which planet were you born? Um, Kashyyyk. I'm a Wookiee, can't you tell? <laughs> uh, Dorelia. It's a remote system. Why? Excellent. Your current age is? Wait a minute. This is kind of weird. What? Wasn't all this in my service records? If you went over them, why would you have to ask all this? Yes. Well, the truth is, I was studying how you responded to my questions. Your reactions helped me judge you. This was a test for me to learn more about your character. Huh. Well, I don't really like being manipulated, Bastila, even if it is just questions. I see. I didn't mean to upset you, but I suppose it was inevitable. You've had a lot to absorb since we escaped Taurus. I apologize. We can speak again later, after you've had time to think about all this. Huh. Because of the bond you and Bastila share, she is extremely interested in learning more about your character. However, you get the sense there is something she isn't telling you. I definitely am getting that sense. Really weird. And how about you, Carthy? Yes, what's on your mind? Well, what's on your mind, Carthy? You know, you've been real quiet lately, it's true. You, I mean, you were quite the chatterbox on Terrace. Well, I guess that's because I kept pestering you about things, but, but besides that, you, you've been quiet lately. What's going on, buddy? You okay? Have I been quiet? Suppose I have. I guess I just don't like being left out of the loop. Huh? Left out of the loop? Uh, I'm not the one leaving you out of the loop, Karth. What, what are you talking about? No? Well, you certainly aren't helping matters any either. Huh. And it's really starting to irritate me. What? For one thing, I want to know what the Jedi Council said to you. They pulled you in there and refused to tell me a thing about it. I'm rather curious to know what went on, and why they didn't keep you on Dantooine for training. Isn't that strange? Well, it is a little strange, I guess, but... I mean, I guess they thought it was more important that I help find the star maps than stay. And why is that? You were a great help on Terrace, but why would they keep you with us? Don't they Don't they have to train you? Well, they said there's a bond between Basil and myself, and I guess because of that bond, uh, 
we should be powerful enough to, to complete this mission. I suppose that might be their thinking. A bond? What kind of bond? You mean to say that they told you that you were tied to Bastila in some way? <laughs> I have trouble believing that. You're a neophyte Padawan who's been saddled with the responsibility of tracking down these star maps. Why? That's not normal. I am not trying to provoke you or to imply that you're somehow responsible for the Jedi Council, but give me a hand here. There has to be a reason. You know what, Karth? Deep down, I'm a little bit with you on this. It is strange that they've saddled me, and of course all of us, with this incredible responsibility, this galaxy-saving quest. It is, it is nuts, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, sure. But I guess because of the bomb with me and Basila, and Basila being so powerful, battle meditation, I, I guess... They just figure that's that's what we gotta do. We're, we're the ones for the job. I don't know. So I guess we gotta do this together, and I guess that's all I can say. What the hell does that mean? And what does that mean? Well, is this more of that destiny garbage that the Jedi keep talking about? Well, that can't be it. Well, I'll tell you this much. I'm not gonna wait around until I'm betrayed again. Oh, jeez. It always comes back to this, Carthy. Come on, man. Listen, I'm not gonna betray you. I am not Saul. Yeah, we'll just see about that, won't we? Look, oh. I didn't mean it that way. I want to get to Saul, not... No, no, forget it. It just seems that all I can do is insult you, isn't it? Just forget I said anything. Let's let's just get on with what we were doing. Jesus, Karth. Karth feels like he's being left out of the loop, where the Jedi Council and Basil are concerned. Because of the betrayals of his past, he's not reacting to the situation well. Hopefully in time, he'll learn to cope with his emotional demons. You are coping! God, Karth, you are the most emo mofo in this entire game. I still love you though, Karthy. You, you freaking weirdo. What? Oh shit, what's that noise? Oh. Would you look at that? We're coming out of hyperspace. Here, let's go see exactly what this place is. Whoop. Huh? Now you gave me all that smack in the beginning of the episode, Zalbar. Now all suddenly you want to talk to me? Well, what are you talking about? Something's not right. Well, what do you mean? is concerned about the emergency food stores in the Ebonhawk's cargo hold. The Wookiee's natural fixation on food might be causing him to worry unjustly, but you should check it out just to be safe. I'm pretty certain it's just Zalbar being a hungry son of a bitch as he always is. But we'll check that out later. For now, we gotta see what this station's all about. Let's go. Well, here we are. This is a pretty strange place. It's, well, it's just a big space station. Decided to bring Jahani, and looks like she's got a level up. What is it? Might as well do that real quick. What you got, Jahani? She's got treat injury and awareness, just like Bastel. Feats. Well, it seems like she's a Jedi Guardian. So... You know, let's get her two-weapon fighting. Yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna dual wield, probably. That, that'd be good for her. And definitely Cure. The more Jedi on our team with Cure, the better. We got another. Definitely gonna round out her strength. Treat injury awareness. And it looks like she's got some dark side power, of course, because she did dabble in the dark side a little bit. So I'm gonna get her shock. That way, yeah, we got two people with dark side powers. Then again, her charisma isn't that great. So, and now that she's more on the light side again, might not be good. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's keep it. More level ups. Improve two weapon fighting, definitely. Oh yeah, let's get Whirlwind. 
and the level ups just keep coming. I'll give her night speed. Again, since she's gonna be dual wielding and she's a, uh, and since she's a Jedi guardian, it's gonna be really good for her. All right. And here is another lightsaber just for you. Oh, nice. I like the purple color. You know, I might, I might wield a purple lightsaber eventually. For now, I'll stick with the green though. All right, let's go everybody. Let's see what's going on here. Hello? Anybody here? There's gotta be somebody operating this station. Oh, eh? Eh? Who was that? What do you want? I recognize your ship. Avex, isn't it? But who are you? You know or something? Oh, sh Yo, this guy sounds just like the Rodian from uh, Dantooine that we talked to. Well, yeah, I'm new. I'm very new. You don't sound like a Transdoshian. And you're not one of Davix. Who are you? What do you want? Well, you could say I'm trying to save the galaxy from the Sith. Eh, Sith? They haven't been here in 50 years. Not since the last war. Don't see why they'd start making a habit of it now. Still, all my business with the Sith is old news. Politics aren't my affair. So long as you don't get all worked up, I guess I can let you in. It would be nice to have someone to talk to for a change. Transdoshians and smugglers aren't exactly stunning conversationalists. Mm, seems like this guy gets visited by a lot of uh, Transdoshians and smugglers. So what are you talking about, Transdoshians and smugglers? They come by every once in a while. It's how I keep in the loop, you know. A Transdoshian lizard speak is kind of hard to follow, and they have pretty limited imaginations. Huh. Smugglers aren't much better either. Look, this is getting kind of awkward through this door. <laughs> if you just hold on a minute, I'll open this damn thing up and we can talk more face to face. Just have to fiddle with the damn door lock. This thing keeps jamming. There we go. Huh. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Hmm, you don't look like I thought you would. Too... human. What? Don't see many of your kind out here at all anymore. Not since the war at any rate. What brings you here? <laughs> this guy's cracking me up. I'm on a quest for the Jedi Council. We can't really reveal too much to complete strangers about what we're doing, you know? The Jedi Council? Don't tell me you're a Jedi! You sure don't look it! What? How do I not look like a Jedi? I got the robes, I got the lightsabers... What are you talking about? I am a Jedi! Now, now, I never said I doubted you, it's just... Well, there aren't exactly a lot of Jedi wandering around these parts. Not after what happened last time. You know, earlier at the beginning of the episode, I was talking about how, you know, Yavin's a big historical place. But it wouldn't be for another 4,000 years. Actually, yeah, the Exar Kun War that happened here. That's right. I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> so what have you heard about the current war? Only what the smugglers and Transdoshians have told me. A new Sith Lord has risen up to replace the dead one. And he's beating the Republic up pretty bad. They didn't seem too displeased with that prospect. Huh, I'm certain. So who are the Transdoshians that visit you so often? The Transdoshians? Mercenaries and bounty hunters. Scum, mostly. They look like big two-legged lizards. That's racist! Huh, this guy's racist as hell about Transdoshians. Oh my goodness. Oh, sort of like Rodians. <laughs> well, what do they want with you? They found me here a couple of years after the war ended. Usually they don't bargain with people they find alone in abandoned space stations, but we worked out a deal. I'd give them a few of my more uh, applicable inventions at reasonable prices, and they'd keep me supplied with food and new materials. It's worked out quite well so far, for years really. With Davicon, they've been getting ideas though. Anything else you want to know? So he's got supplies, huh? Hmm. 
Do you have anything you'd be willing to sell me? Yeah, I have a few things kicking around the place. Stuff the Transdotians and smugglers have brought for me to look at. And a few things I've been making from the parts. They are cheap, though. They pay a lot for what I can make. And anything I sell to you, I can't exactly sell to them, now can I? But if you're willing to pay, I've got a few of my more advanced things you can look at. And I'm always working on more, so you can check back some other time if I don't have what you want right now. Here, have a look. Oh. Okay, so this guy's got some really good stuff. Light exoskeleton? Wow, for light armor, this is really good. It's got plus one dex and plus one strength on it. Oh my god! Holy shit, 10,000 credits though. Can't afford that right now. Shadow armor, stealth plus four? This would be amazing for mission. Dexterity plus three on these advanced stabilizer gauntlets with blaster bolt deflection. Ugh! My God, he's got really good shit. This is like a specialty store. Awareness plus 10 with dexterity plus two. Oh my God, mind affecting immunity and poison. And a droid shield with unlimited uses. Guys, holy McFuck. Excuse my French, but holy McFuck! This guy, like, god damn, when I get a little bit more credits, I don't know how. But I, I gotta find a way to get more credits. Uh, but but if I do find a way, yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm be back. I'm gonna be back, buddy. You know, if you are ever, like, you know, needing the money, just keep an eye out for racing bonds. What? Racing bonds? Really? Really, really, my friend. I am looking to collect them, and I will pay you big credits for whatever you can bring me. So, so if I ever find these racing bonds, you'll give me a bunch of money for them? That is correct. You can usually get them by racing in shoot tracks and other similar events. Okay. Why are they so valuable to you? Ah, uh, do not worry about it. You know, we will just say, uh, do, do not worry about that. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, if I ever come across them, I guess, uh, sure. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, buddy? Me? I'm nobody. Doing nothing. I've been in this system for over 50 years, before this station was even built. I just sit around all day and tinker with this and that, trying out a few of my ideas. So you're an inventor? Maybe a little. I'm an inventor. I just tinker with stuff I found laying around the ruins of Yavin 4, or that the Transdoshians and smugglers bring me. Of course, with them it's usually weapons and things. I just have so many ideas that people haven't seemed to come up with yet. It's really quite astonishing. So there's stuff on Yavin 4? You must take a ship down there sometimes and just go exploring in the ruins. Sounds pretty cool and also kind of dangerous. Eh, well, there's the old ruins from Exar Kun War on that moon, but I've been here over 50 years and I can tell you it's it's been picked pretty clean by now. If I haven't found it, it's not there. All that's left is rubble. Damn. Have you found anything at all useful? Some. Some things I'm still tinkering with. Trying to get them working. Mostly, I modify some things the Transdotians and smugglers bring me and make them work better. So before I go, tell me about the smugglers. Rodians, Aqualish, Twi'leks, whatever. They all work for an organization called The Exchange. You might have heard of them. They run smuggling operations all over the galaxy. Weapons, slaves, whatever someone is willing to pay the price for. They found my talents very useful. Like the Transdotians, they get me to patch up and upgrade what they bring, and pay me well for it. They also bring news and surprise. Well, this guy is very interesting, but... But I think I'll be going for now, buddy. Eh? Hmm. Well, suit yourself. I'll probably be here if you get back. Ha! Huh. Oh, that's real nice. Yeah, this is a very interesting place, huh? It's pretty cool that, um, you know, he could sell us these really good items. 
Why do you still have that lightsaber activated, Jahani? What's going on? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cut it here. Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode, guys, of Let's Play Kotar. I think in the next one, we're going to go back into the ship, maybe look in the storeroom, like Zalbar said, and see what the hell's going on. Maybe I'll talk to this guy a little more, too. We got to find a way to, to get some credits or those racing bonds he was talking about. Look, there's Yavin over there, dude. Oh, man. What a historical sight. Historic. I really do love that they put this in the game, though. This is bonus DLC content. It's really cool. It's it's definitely got the best items in the game. And I think you unlock more stuff the more you progress in the story. At any rate, guys, like I said, I'm cutting it here. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this has been The Box Man. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as always, for more outstanding Let's Plays. And until the next one, me and Valen and the crew will catch you later. Turn off that goddamn lightsaber, Jahani. What are you doing?